you are listening to The Art of Semi-Fiction. I am Robin Miller. And I'm Jane Daly. And today we are going to be talking about writing conferences. Awesome. I it, love writing conferences. We do. We both love writing conferences. And we're it's kind of it's kind of writing conference season. Although there are over 30 Christian writing conferences in North America, wow. and they're sprinkled throughout the world. Not the world. Why did I just say that? I have no idea. They're sprinkled throughout the um, year is what I meant, which is sort of like world. Kind of a difference. A little difference. But so they're not, they're not, they're, you'll find some kind of going on most mm-hmm. months of the year somewhere, but there's definitely a concentration in the spring. I wonder why. I'm guessing because of weather, but I'm, I'm oh, no meteor, uh, meteorologist, but yes. Um, and because there's, you know, there's places like Colorado and there, I mean, there's, there's, yeah, weather's going to be a big factor, yeah. but you will see quite a few in the spring, summer, summer. Fall. fall. That's yeah. Those are your big months. Mm-hmm. And in Northern California, we have a ton of uh, great writing conferences as well as workshops and special events that happen. So it's kind of it's kind of tax season for for writing conferences and and information because it's just there's so much going on. People are getting prepared. People are coming well, back. Let, but let's talk about, um, for somebody who's never been to a writing yes. conference, it can be a little scary. So what? What? T- talk to somebody who's never been to one. What What are, What can they expect? What can they expect? <clears throat> well, again, every writer's conference is going to have a little bit different personality, and they're going to have a different focus. So we, when we talked earlier about um, choosing a writer's organization mm-hmm. to be involved in, that fits your personality and your goals. Same thing applies for a writer's conference. There are some that are really kind of geared toward the beginning writer. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get a lot of wonderful information when you're just starting out. So all that, what does an agent do? How do you submit? What is a proposal? What is point of view? Exactly. All of those kinds of things. Um, Some are, uh, you mentioned ACFW. And that is um, American Christian Fiction Writers. Yep. And they have a huge conference every year that moves around a bit. And they are for fiction writers, obviously. So if you're a nonfiction writer, you're probably not going to go. Probably not going to be your your, uh, choice. Right. So you really do need to see what's available. And then you need to look at their faculty. Do a little due diligence because... Unfortunately, there are some times when a a conference is filled with people who have been doing maybe working at that conference for 30 years, um, haven't published in 25, um, might not be the most uh, accurate in conveying information. Sometimes a a writing conference to cut costs will have somebody who has a specialty in er one area teach in an area that maybe isn't their specialty. Mm. So um, you have to be really, really careful and do your homework. Um, What do you want to get out of a conference? What do you want to learn to who do you want to connect with? Are they going to be there? That kind of thing. And I'm I'm assuming that you're going to be talking about the advantage of going to a writer's conference for that person who is has just decided that they are going to actually call themselves a writer. Yep. Because he or she finally said, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write, or yep. maybe they've written something and they someone has said, Oh, you need to go to a conference. Yep. What does that mean? Exactly. Well, I think you have to think of it as an investment. Okay. It really is that. And if you think of it as an investment in your writing career, in your writing skill set then I think you'll be one step ahead of being diligent and figuring out whether or not a particular conference is for you because you're going to get a lot of different things from a conference. One is teaching. Every, every writer's conference is going to have teaching, whether it's applicable to you or not is kind of yet to be seen. One of one of my favorite, one of our favorite writing conferences is West coast Christian writers. That's right. And one of the things that I value about them is not only do they have the beginning one-on-one kind of classes, but they really think about the intermediate and the advanced writer right. and what could benefit somebody no matter where they are on the journey. Hugely important because not all writers' conferences do that. So you'll get teaching 
and you have to check whether or not it's teaching that is, is applicable to you. Of course, you're going to meet people. It's it's like it's the sweetest thing to have in a whole group of your tribe. It's it's like I I found my people. Yeah, I mean, you walk around with people who are just like weeping for joy that that introverts. I mean, most writers are introverts. Yes, there, there are a small segment that aren't, but most are introverts. And yet that doesn't mean that we don't want or need or crave connection. And when we get it with somebody who understands the process we're going through and just the ups and downs of writing. It's, I mean, you just see people going, you know, my people, my right. people. I'm a word nerd. You're yeah. a word nerd. We get along. Will you understand when I say my character did this? Because usually people who don't write think, what do you mean your character did that? And you didn't expect it. Yeah. <laughs> You're because, writing it. <laughs> because that's what happened. Absolutely. <laughs> so there, I'm, and no, and I'm telling you, there's, you cannot underestimate because I've said this a million times that writing to me is a team event. I, when I started, I thought it was a solo event, but the reality is through encouragement and just, just help and critique and writing partners and everything that you do, it's a team event, especially if you're a Christian, because you know, Satan doesn't want anybody who, who is trying to honor the Lord to speak into this world. And the so thing, the thing that that has been the most valuable for me is that I have made friends, just incredibly close, good friends who don't even live in the area. Yeah. But because I've met them at a writer's conference, we email, we text, yes. we phone, we Facebook, and, and they get it. Yes. When, when I post, so-and-so rejected my work. They understand, whereas yeah. somebody who is not a writer doesn't get the, how yeah. how much that stings. Absolutely, and I, and it, it's a it's a step out of your normal life. You and I had known each other for what two three years, something like that. We were on a board together. We saw each other at events, but it wasn't until the writers conference when magic happened. Well, yeah, because, because we were out of our. Our world, and, but and you're spending when you're at a conference, you're spending almost 24 hours a day with people. Yep, because you've got your breakfast and your workshops and your lunch and your workshops, your dinner and your after dinner night owls, and and you've you've got oodles of time to spend yep. with people to get to know them. And that's exactly what we fell. We fell in friendship, love Aww. at a writers conference, and the rest it was beautiful. history. And and I I do think that there's stepping out of your regular life. So if, especially if you are, if you're married, if you have children, if you have a full-time oh, job, it is really hard because you, you're just kind of grasping at moments to think about writing. And this is just an, a, a really wonderful way of stepping out of that regular kind of rat race and letting yourself just be immersed in the craft of it, the encouragement of it, the calling of it. So I think there's huge. And I've gotten some great ideas for articles yeah. from a writer's conference, not how to write, but like, oh, how about if, you know, let me jot that down. Just ideas that, that it's just because you're out of your regular day-to-day -day four walls or yeah. work or whatever, um, totally different atmosphere. You get some your mind has a chance to be creative. Absolutely. And one of the practical things that happens when you're in that environment because of the, t the instructors and the faculty that are there, you're going to meet industry professionals. Right. So, for example, I met my agent when I was at a writer's conference. So did I. And most people don't think of, you think of things in a more formal capacity, but I, I, I'm not a non-Christian writer, so I don't know how it is in the general market. But certainly in the Christian publishing world, it's it's a team event, even with the editors and publishers and agents. So you build relationship. And that's what happened before my agent even was an agent. She was an instructor and I fell in love with her. I took one of her, her um, morning workshop, kind of mentoring workshops, I got to know her over coffee, over meals, over just walking from one thing to another, fell in love with her to the point that when she became an agent, our relationship was such that we knew we connected. Mm -hmm. And again, the rest, as they say, is history. Okay, so you're going to get to know. And that's something that I know we're probably going to cover in a future podcast, but it's also how do you, how do you carry yourself? So at a yeah. writer's conference, 
do you step out and meet people? Are you friendly? Um, do you, you know, do you have a, a good, I want to say it's an old fashioned word, but the word is deportment. How do you, how is your deportment? Because yeah. I know that agents and editors watch you. And if you pitch to them and then you turn around and gossip about someone or, mm -hmm. um, you know, behave poorly, yeah. you're less likely to be able to have that relationship that you want to have long-term. I've got a good analogy for this. Okay. My, my youngest is a musical theater. Well, he's an addict. Let's just be honest. He's, he's an absolute addict. And one of the most important things, ironically, from a Christian director, who was not a Christian theater, but she, she was a Christian, one of the things that she said to um, a group, his, his very first audition of anything he'd ever done, said, she said, you are auditioning every moment you're in my eyesight. Wow. So not only when you get up there and say, hello, my name is, and this is what I'll be singing, or when you're in your dance audition or whatever, when you're sitting in the chairs, whether you dump garbage on the floor, whether you talk unkindly to people, whether you show respect, you know, all of those things. And I thought that is exactly what you're talking about when you're at a writer's conference. If you want to become the queen of devotionals or the queen of Christian marriage, there was, there, this is another interesting thing. One time I was at a place where somebody, a conference for somebody, was there with her husband pitching uh, basically how to make the most wonderful marriage kind of in the world. But, oh, my gosh, uh, nobody could sit next to them at a meal because they were yelling at each other. And Whoa. I know it was and it was I thought, you know, um, I don't know. It was just it was Maybe super uncomfortable. Maybe that's the key. Well, there. I'm not going to go that way. I'm going <laughs> to just stick with my, you know, 20 plus year marriage. And I'm going to stick with our not yelling at each other in public places and a Christian dining room in a conference. But but I think that that's, that's an important point to make is you really, people are going to be wanting to know that you're living out. If you're about grace and you don't show grace to anybody, if you're writing a book about forgiveness and everybody's on your list, you know, you're not going to really show that you are really writing about the calling that God has in your life. Well, and I want to also bring something else up that I want to make sure that, you know, you're your conferees know that you may go to your very first writing um, conference and you expect that you're going to come home with a contract. Yes. And it does not work that way. I remember that James L. Rubart, my good friend, Jim Rubart has said, when you go to a writing conference, it's not about contracts. It's about contacts. Mm. You make as many contacts as you can carry some business cards with your picture on them. Free Collect tip. some yeah. business cards from other people, stay in contact, and make sure that you're making the most of that conference that yeah. you go to afterwards. Yeah. And I think that that people get a little shy because if we're Christians, the, the whole idea of self-promotion, or if you're an <laughs> introvert walking up to somebody, it you know, it can be a little bit daunting. But you have to think about if God's calling you to write. And you're saying, yeah, I'm too shy to do that, or, or, or I don't have anything to say. But God's saying you've got something to say. we got to stand on what he's calling us to do. Right. So let's get a little preachy right now. If he's That's calling right. us, he's going to equip us. And what did Bill Giovanetti say at the West Coast Christian Writers Conference? We are responsible for faith, and God is responsible for outcome. outcomes. <laughs> so that's that was freeing to me. As a writer, all I've got to do is be obedient. That's right. And we, we've got over, we've got choices. The one good thing about, about Christian writing, um, the, the publishing industry is we are, it's doing pretty well. And we've got a lot of options for educating ourselves. Like I mentioned, we've got over 30. Um, and those are just kind of the major conferences. And those are Christian conferences. Right? Those are because Christian writers there conferences. There are also conferences that are not, you know, I wouldn't call them non-Christian, but they're secular. They're yeah, the secular, general market. They're secular conferences that are also really good. Yes, yeah, but especially the genre specific ones. Mm -hmm. Those are where you're just going to get information about your specific genre that's a little bit unique. That's those are are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But but in the Christian world having over 30, that's amazing. That's, and that's not those are not the one day intensives and the workshops and all those other ways that you can get um kind of like mini conferences. Those are real big conferences. So you've got a lot of options. Um, two of our favorites. We are both partial to, again, West Coast Christian writers. Yes. Um, I think that she's got to bring out her cup again. 
I don't have a West Coast Christian Writers Cup, but, well, I do actually have one. I just don't have one here. Um, but it, it, to me, it is probably the most balanced and most cost effective and most excellently staffed conference on the West Coast. It's, it's, it's really, it is awesome. Um, but again, do your due diligence. And it's amazingly affordable as well. That, that's, I mean, it's, well, it's stupid money, to be perfectly honest. It's ridiculously inexpensive for what you get. It, it mm -hmm. is a true ministry. Um, and that's that's led by Susie Flory, who's a New York Times bestselling author right. and teacher. And she's a phenomenal human being. And she has really brought this um, conference into the modern world because it started out years and years and years ago. She took it over. And over the last several years, it's just been revamped and it's just mm -hmm. been phenomenal. It's, it's a great conference. We, we also love Oregon Christian writers. Yes, up in we Oregon. Do. Look, look, look. <laughs> you can't see it on the podcast, but you can see it on the video. Her little eyes lit up because she just loves it. Because it's the very first writing conference I ever attended. I attended their one day conference so and they have two kinds. They have the longer summer conference mm -hmm. and then they have a couple of they one have day. Three one day conferences, yeah. one a quarter, and then they have a big conference in the summer. So I attended a one day just to kind of dip my toe into that little writing puddle and found out that it was not threatening at all. And it was fabulous and amazing. Yeah. And so when summer came around, I went to the long, longer conference. And as you said, you find your people, you yeah. find your tribe and it's like being an alien. And, you know, we're here, we're dropped in this earth, but I found another little tribe of aliens. Yeah. All thought yes. the same way. All from the planet Zargon. But that, yes. And that's, that's the environment is going to be different. Every single conference, if they're in the same place, especially they're going to have some sort of physical kind of um, atmosphere that you need to connect with. And they're going to have, a mindset that you're going to need to mm -hmm. connect with. So how do you choose which, which conference for me, the big, the big deal, if you're investing, which I'm assuming everybody has limited finances, no matter who you are limited. Um, if you're going to invest your conference dollar somewhere, I say you need to be realistic about where you're at and find the conference that meets those needs. It is so wonderful to say, when I go to a conference and um, I hear somebody say, oh, I'm gonna be there too. I love the connection of, oh, I'm gonna get to see that person like you're mm -hmm. mentioning. I don't see any other time than a conference, but it's really not, it's a very expensive way to just meet, for, you know, to reconnect with <laughs> to friends. friends. Yeah, go, yeah. go to a, a girl's weekend in Lake Tahoe or something. That'll be cheaper than doing this. Right. So, so make sure that you're going to a conference that is currently meeting the needs in your writing career. Are you at a place where you're wanting to start pitching to agents? Go to where there are a lot of agents. Mm -hmm. Some have none. Right. So that's not a good use of your, your money. If you're beginning writing, don't go to somewhere that are intensives for advanced writers because you're going to be over your head and you're just not there yet. Well, and the other thing to look at too is geography. So I yes. probably wouldn't attend a writer's conference in Florida because Unless we teach at it. Oh. Well, right, because it's too far. It wouldn't yeah. be cost effective for me, so I'd prefer to pick something on the West Coast. But for yeah. people who are on the East Coast or the Midwest, there's there's writers conferences in all of those geographies that wouldn't won't cost you exactly a, you know an arm and a leg for for plane fare exactly because you're going to have your conference uh, cost. You're going to have your um, if you have to spend money for lodging mm -hmm. and then food and then uh you know transportation yeah they can add up which is why you need to really look at that the the what you're getting for what you're investing right so we're going to just go through a couple points to just wrap up of how to get the, the most out of a conference one is what we're talking about planning ahead mm -hmm. really figuring out what the return on your investment is going to be right it are if you're looking for agents are there going to be the agents yeah. you would like to be connecting with there if you're there's a topic for example, romance writing, are there, and you're a romance writer and you're going to a conference where they don't even have a workshop on it, probably, probably not a good bet. choice. Um, here's a big one. And here's something that I didn't do. My first, my first conference, I had a binder with everything highlighted. Every, I mean, I had maps that were from one workshop to the next. I was going to do everything that was humanly possible at this workshop and meet everybody and all that sort of thing. And I wore myself out. I absolutely it's exhausted you're, you're myself. You're pretty much drinking from a fire hose. Yes. And, I, and what I, what I thought is if I'm taking time away from my family and at the time I had special needs kids, special needs kids at home, that was, 
I thought I've got to get every bit of information and value out of it. And what I did is nearly kill myself. So don't try to do too much. So pace yourself. Pace yourself. Take good notes whenever you go to a class, but consider buying the recording. Yeah. That's another, it's, it's always a fraction of the cost of, of whatever conference. And you can listen to it over and over and you can see different uh, classes and workshops that you weren't able they, to go yeah. to. So I say buy those. And the one thing I say is don't ever leave with that deer in the headlights. Look, have some action points. And if you don't know what those action points are, start talking to people. Mm -hmm. The instructor that was talking about platform, go to that instructor and say, can you just give me one thing I, that you think I should do yeah. in this next month? Whatever it is, find some action points. And if you got that and you can bring that into your next phase of your writing career, you got your money's worth. Awesome. Well, you have been listening to The Art of Semi-Fiction, where we explore every corner of the written word. I'm Jane Daly. And I am Robin Miller. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe. And like us. <laughs>